Hello, my friends. Welcome to Goop and Giggle. Today, we're going to talk about my four favorite bees, bean bags, balls, balloons, and bowling. So let's have some fun. I'll give you some quick ideas, throw together activities you can do right away, either inside or outside. So let's talk about balls first. So balls can be almost anything. You know that from your child already, right? The first thing they want to do with any small object is pick it up and throw it. But let's talk about some safer balls. So one that I like to do with the little ones is make these little sock balls. So just any old sock, roll it from the toe, and then turn the cuff down over the toe part and there's a simple ball and it stays together pretty well. So you don't have to worry about taping it or anything like that. You can if you want to. So these make a really safe inside ball for even the smallest ones. Another great safe ball is a couple of pieces of tissue paper rolled up. I would prefer tissue paper over like say printing paper or something like that because printing paper, we might get a, a paper cut, but tissue paper, not so. You would just take this and leave it like this, or you could take a little bit of painter's tape or another tape and simply fasten that down a little bit so it doesn't unroll. And your ball is pretty sturdy there. Pretty good. So those are some of the really easy ones. You can simply turn a piece of fruit into a ball too and then have it for a snack later. Really nice sensory for the very young ones as they smell an orange or an apple and you can play a little game of it, rolling it back and forth together. So that would be fun. Also teaches them the names of the fruit while you're doing it. So that's a great idea. Then I love inflatable balls because there's a couple of reasons. For one thing, when it's deflated, you can have 10 or 12 balls and take up less than a room, room in a Ziploc bag. And so I think that these are really fun. They're very safe inside. They're pretty, pretty much can't knock anything over inside. So they, and you can take them inside to outside. You can use them in the swimming pool or the bathtub or to play anywhere in the house. So I really like that and then deflating them. And of course, for your little ones, the little tiny ones, you would want to leave some air out so that they can pinch the ball and that's easier for them to grab. I would probably let a little more air out like than this even to let them pinch the ball so they can grab it because their little hands can't do this palming yet. So that's a great ball to have in the house. So of course, balloons are always great. I love balloons because when you're first teaching your children how to handle a ball, they have more time to concentrate before the ball comes down. It's a really safe way if they miss catching the ball and it hits their face, it won't hurt them. A good way to teach how to catch a ball is to use the balloon and say reach and pull, reach and pull. So the child is standing ready, the ball or balloon will hit their hands and they reach in and pull it to their body and that way they have it securely. So that's a great way to teach how to catch and I would start with a balloon because it won't hurt them. So there's some small balls that are great for the little hands. I like wiffle balls for babies because they can stick their fingers in there and they can get a hold of it that way. And here's a tiny wiffle ball. They can put their whole hand around that. Those are great little balls to start out with. And then just a simple store ball that's really squeezy and soft. That's a great one. Um, and for a big ball, I would teach them how to bowl and roll with this inside only, not a, not a throwing ball inside, but bowling and rolling. They could also do some tummy time with this. You could lay your child on top of the ball, put it between your legs solidly, and your child could roll back and forth on the ball. And that's a great exercise for their core. Um, even your tiny children could do that. They could all, you could also set them on top of the ball and they could bounce. But again, make sure you have this ball really tight in your legs, have a tight grip on your child, and let them bounce on the ball. Older children can learn how to do that by holding the ball underneath them, but make sure that they know that that ball has to be underneath them or they're gonna land hard. So that's a good way to play with the, the bigger balls, and it makes a great ball for kicking outside, but I would say inside this is a great bowling ball or rolling ball. Rolling teaches the child how to throw underhand. So that brings us to bowling. So one of my favorite ways to learn how to bowl in the house is to either put tape on the floor so they have a track, or you could use some swimming noodles 
and teach them to roll the ball down the swimming noodles until it hits the target. Some targets that you might have would be simply some recycled bottles, water bottles. So those would make a great target rolling down. You could use a couple of simple little toys. That could be a great target at the end. Or you could use cups, either linear or stacked. To roll those down. So kind of think of the typical carnival games that you've seen before. So rolling and rolling in a track. Also targets on the wall. So some of these things are very safe to throw against the wall. For instance, our tissue paper ball or our sock ball. And you can see I have taped on the wall a triangle, square and rectangle. The rectangle has some numbers on it so they could throw at the number and they can just throw it, say, throw it at the triangle throw it at the square, and that teaches those colors. You could do it with colors and numbers, anything. That would be a really great, fun target game and also a learning game at the same time. So there's one more catching game that we could do, and that's with this scoop that I made out of our milk carton jug. So just cut the top off, and they can scoop and catch the ball this way. If you had two of these, you can actually throw them back and forth and scoop it back and forth. So that's a fun scoop ball. Couple of other bean bags. We said we'd talk about bean bags. Bean bags are super easy to make. Just a couple of scraps of fabric glued together or sewn together. I color coded these so we can say we can use, you know, the red bean bag or the green bag bag, use the yellow bean bag and just add some rice or beans inside or some little beads, make sure that it's secure so your children can't get those little pieces out. And bean bags are great for balancing, practicing throwing and catching and target practice as well. They make really good balls. A yarn ball is something that made really easily with a skein of yarn, just wrap it round and round and round a piece of cardboard, clip the ends, tie it off, and you've got these great little balls too. Now with these, you wanna make sure that the children know that they can't put these little strands in their mouth because they can pull them out and they will pull them out. <laughs> so if you just remind them that you won't have a ball pretty long if you pull the hairs out. So please leave the hairs where they're supposed to be. So there's just some really quick trips, tips on making simple carnival games out of your balls and your bean bags in the house. Thank you for joining me at Goof and Giggle and for all these instructions and more, go to SharonPearson.com blog. Thanks and have a beautiful day.